Welcome everyone. Um, today I'm going to talk about novel strategies in advanced interventional cardiology and vascular treatment. My name is Reika Jeremberger. I'm a full-time PhD student right now at the Heart and Vascular Center. And uh, my vision is to improve uh, patient care in Hungary and worldwide through evidence-based innovative healthcare solutions. And for this, my mission is to provide forward-looking and novel scientific results in coronary artery and vascular treatment. Uh, today, in my presentation, I'm going to talk about my uh, two of my uh, most advanced um, um, specific goals and projects, although we have uh, three. But because of time constraints, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, these uh, two. Uh, both projects uh, were made by the uh, methodology of meta-analysis. The first one is dealing with the optimization of the treatment of calcified coronary artery disease. And the third one, or the second meta-analysis, is dealing with the left ventricular unloading strategies during VE ECMO treatment. Um, so my first project, uh, uh, project title is uh, quite a spoiler, so I'm uh, moving forward a bit. But why is uh, this uh, project and this, this uh, topic important? So calcified coronary lesions uh, are quite a uh, um, high burden for uh, the cardiology specialists because uh, um, a high proportion of the patients are affected. And as you can see, um, uh, it's associated with a really high overall adverse event rate and even mortality rates. Because of the resistant plug burden, the calcified coronary uh, lesions require additional treatment modalities uh, besides the standard ones, these called the plug modification techniques. We have multiple options there, but we don't know which or what kind of combinations are the best. So our aim was to uh, compare these methods to each other. So our patient population contained uh, all of patients that uh, had moderate or severely uh, calcified coronary lesions and treated with a rotational atherectomy uh, as a basis. Uh, basically, we uh, compared two uh, types of balloons uh, to each other. So for the intervention group, we investigated patients who were treated with rotational atherectomy and after that, uh, modified balloon types like cutting and scoring balloons. And we compared that to patients who were treated with rotational atherectomy and after that, were course devices, which are basically plain balloon techniques. Um, for our primary outcome, we had the efficacy outcome of major adverse cardiovascular events as a composite outcome of uh, acute coronary syndrome, repeated revascularization, all-cause mortality, instant restenosis and stent thrombosis. And uh, for our secondary outcome, we had uh, some of sa the safety outcomes for um, as a procedural uh, complication types. Uh, here you can see our flowchart of selection. We ended up with eight eligible articles. You can see uh, the details of them here on the baseline characteristics table. I just wanted to highlight that we had two um, RCTs. The rest of the studies were observational studies, and we had two studies dealing with the uh, scoring balloon, and the rest of the studies were dealing with the cutting balloon. These are all uh, modified balloon types, but uh, different uh, types. On the next slides, you can see the results of our analysis. Uh, on the left-hand side, we can see uh, the forest plots, and on the right-hand side, you can see uh, the risk of bias assessment results for each outcome and for each study. Um, here uh, is, our, uh, is, is the analysis of our uh, primary outcome of the aforementioned maze. We use the EFAP measure of odds ratio, and uh, from this result, we can see that um, the overall adverse event rate were almost, was almost half, half as many in case of the modified balloon group than in the plain balloon group, which is clinically really important. Also, uh, we found out that uh, our results were may influenced by uh, the fact that uh, some of the papers included not only severe but moderate cases as well, and uh, not separately. So we decided to have a separate analysis or subgroup analysis, uh, including only those studies that included only severely calcified coronary lesions. And uh, from this result, again, we use the effect measure of odds ratio. We can see that, um, that uh, the application of the modified balloons can significantly reduce the overall adverse event rate in this uh, critically ill uh, patient population. Um, 
Again, uh, these are the safety outcomes, the uh, slow flow, no reflow, and the uh, coronary perforation rates. And uh, I just wanted to highlight these results because uh, the combined uh, use of rotational atherectomy and modified balloons are considered more aggressive treatment methods, although we couldn't really find any differences between the two groups uh, regarding the um, safety outcomes and procedural complication rates. So for our conclusion, we can state that uh, uh, patients, and especially those who were um, presented with uh, severely calcified coronal lesions, can benefit from the application of uh, modified balloon types after a rotational atherectomy treatment uh, without increasing the risk of procedural complications. Also, we highlighted uh, in our manuscript the fact that we find that really, really important to uh, use uh, intravascular imaging techniques uh, for the objective evaluation of lesion characteristics, uh, for the optimization of uh, uh, these, uh, um, the treatment of this uh, patient population. Uh, this is uh, the status of our manuscript. It's under review right now at the Cardiology and Therapy, which is a Q1 journal. Moving forward to my uh, third study, uh, or second uh, presented study, um, the comparing the safety and efficacy of left ventricular unloading strategies for vano arterial echo in patients with cardiogenic shock. Oh, sorry. Uh, cardiogenic shock, um, when it comes to the cardiogenic shock uh, and the treatment of it, uh, VA ECMO is often used a component of the complex care. There are a lot of problems with the management of it, um, which is a um, really great discussion in the cardiology and the anesthesiology. Uh, specialists, but I would like to highlight uh, the problem of the retrograde aortic fluid causes that can lead to negative hemodynamic effects and insufficient decompression, worsening the already um, uh, low ejection fraction. The in-hospital mortality rates of the VE ECMO treatment can be uh, quite high even nowadays, but it can be uh, reduced. Uh, which is proved uh, uh, by some of the studies. And uh, there are a lot of methods that can be uh, useful in this case, um, uh, providing a support for the left ventricular's work. This is called the uh, LV left ventricular unloading or venting uh, strategies. I wrote some of uh, uh, the methods uh, here. Um, but uh, the problem is, again, that we have a lot of, uh, lot of options, but the guidelines are unclear. So our aim was to compare some of them to each other. So uh, in our study, we will compare the Impala to the intra-aortic balloon pump, or IABP, uh, to each other by the analysis of uh, some of the safety and uh, efficacy outcomes. Um, we uh, made a systematic search in three databases with this search key that you can see here, and we added, ended up with eight eligible articles. Um, and uh, right now, when we polishing the data extraction table, although we have a preliminary version that is uh, sent to the statisticians already. So uh, for summary, I uh, just wanted to highlight that uh, um, I think um, and I'm uh, confident that uh, my future and, uh, um, and the, the presented uh, research can adequately serve the purpose of uh, providing help for practitioners with evidence-based decision making. And I wanted to um, um, highlight this uh, uh, project um, I'm, I was talking about. Uh, thank you for your attention. Let me close my presentation with the words of uh, Einstein. If we knew what it was uh, we were doing, it would not be called research, would it? Uh, thank you for your presentation. I have uh, actually one question uh, for the regarding the first uh, project. That uh, do you know if uh, is at least there any uh, difference uh, between races uh, in the uh, cardiovascular status? Because uh, as I as far as I uh, so. Uh, so uh, most of the papers which you uh, processed uh, were uh, d uh, derived from, from Asia, so mainly Japan and, and, and China, and only one paper was uh, derived from, uh, from Germany. So maybe it can influence the results, I, I think so. Mm, thank you for the question. Uh, yes, uh, definitely. So 
Um, as you said, we had only one ju uh, journal uh, and paper um, uh, from uh, Germany. The rest of them were uh, Asian papers. And uh, it, come to, it came to our attention that uh, there were a uh, bit different um, um, results uh, from, this, uh, from these uh, papers, but we uh, didn't want to draw um, that much uh, conclusion from one paper uh, uh, being a bit different from the rest of uh, the others. So I think we need more data on that. Um, and um, there were also um, other um, uh, reasons that can that could influence this uh, um, th this difference. Um, I don't know uh, whether should I uh, uh, say uh, more or deeper um, and go deeper uh, from this. Uh, yeah, and um, actually, it's, uh, it's it's surprising for me that uh, we can uh, draw conclusion from uh, from that papers, and uh, you mentioned that uh, you need uh, more data, but how? Because uh, you uh, made a thorough uh, literature search, as I as I saw. Yeah. So uh, the problem is that uh, I I came across that uh, uh, most of the papers uh, that investigated this question were uh, Asian papers or Asian uh, work groups uh, who uh, were working on that uh, question. And uh, as a limitation of this. Yeah. In the, in the paper. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, yeah. So first of all, congratulations on this project. Uh, very well done. And I would have a question as I am not practicing like uh, cardiology. Can you maybe tell me like how we can really measure these moderately and severely calcified lesions, plaques, uh, like how it is done if your CT is used or intravascular, as you mentioned, and maybe what is the current practice uh, in your place? Like how do you treat it? How do you decide? Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, so um, uh, in the papers, uh, uh, they, the difference was uh, also that... Uh, they measured uh, the type of uh, lesions uh, differently as well. Um, um, in most of the cases, they just uh, uh, so uh, the uh, flu um, so the coronarography, and uh, from that picture, they um, said, yeah, that's a severe case. Yeah, that's a moderate case. There are some of um, uh, guidelines for that, but uh, that's not a quite strict one. Uh, of course, um, why I highlighted the uh, intravascular imaging technique is uh, why uh, uh, is is that because uh, uh, you know the for the objective evaluation we need them. Um, for example, the intravascular ultrasound method or OCT, what we uh, also use in our department, not quite frequently. The OCT uh, uh, more uh, the ultrasound method is it's quite cheaper, but we can evaluate more uh, these uh, lesions more objectively. Uh, that can help uh, optimize the treatment methods. And uh, I think uh, uh, what we suggested in our paper is that uh, these research um, articles and uh, and uh, these researches should base their um, um, treatment methods and uh, and the grouping uh, um, based on um, these uh, objective methods so the intravascular um, imaging techniques because it's it's not so subjective than uh, only the coronarography one.